it's Mecca for drag racing fans. 60,000 strong, they come to the Winter National Drag. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Economaki. Behind the main grandstands here at Pomona, to reflect one of the major points of interest that drag racing holds for spectators. For only in drag racing can a fan get up whenever he wants, walk out of the stands and into the pit area. In today's case, a 200 acre one that amounts to an exotic car show and an automotive bazaar. And once in the vast pit and staging area, the fan can eyeball the competing cars, the crew, the driver, the girls, have a beer, get an autograph, think about perhaps buying a car. For it is this openness that has helped make drag racing one of the most popular forms of motorsports in the country with an annual spectator turnout of five million. And they're all here for the 20th anniversary running of the National Hot Rod Association's Winter Nationals with $410,000 in prizes at stake and over 600 entrants seeking fame and glory as they try to make time stand still. Of the many categories and classes in drag racing, there are three that command the most interest. Top fuel, the most exotic of the dragsters, alcohol burning, supercharged, 2,200 horsepower, down the quarter mile and faster than six seconds, topping out at 250 miles an hour. Next in line is the funny car, perhaps the most dangerous of all forms of drag racing, where the driver sits inside a plastic body, the engine in front of him. If it blows up, he's in serious trouble, not quite as fast as the top fueler. And then, closest to what one, one might find in the family garage, is the Pro Stocker here. Surprisingly enough, the most expensive of all three. Some of these cost as much as $60,000 to field. The cheapest one of the three, $40,000. Attention now shifts to the starting line for the quarterfinals and funny cars. Hitting Kenny Bernstein of Louisiana in the far lane, Ron Harris of Pennsylvania on the near side. As they come up in the staging area to tow the line. 2,200 horsepower under the hood of these plastic body cars. There's the staging lights. It goes from yellow to green. There's no warning. Alertness, and the start is the key to success in drag racing, many will tell you. And they're off. Bernstein in the far side. Takes on. Harris's car explodes. His windshield is broken. His supercharger went off. Bernstein goes on to win. A tough break for the Pennsylvanian. Let's have another look. Here he comes, down the line, there's the flame, the supercharger goes way up. These cars are built for safety, and so is the gear the drivers wear. We suspect he's okay, but we'll be back in one minute to check. No experience car race, and Roy Harris's car bears it out. The car is back in the pits now. Let's have a look at the damage. Between this and the engine itself was a supercharger before a 150-mile-an-hour backfire we saw going down the track. Now let's take a look at what a full-size supercharger looks like here's one here the bottom part weighs 70 pounds after the explosion all that was left on this car was this part of the supercharger from here forward gone like shrapnel from a hand grenade down the drag strip now let's have a word with the driver Roy Harris a 15-year veteran Roy that ever happened to you before no that's the first time we ever had a blower explosion what was it like at the wheel when it went off well, it was a loud explosion, and, and, you know, I knew it was very disappointing. What about yourself? Did any of the pieces get to you? No, everything stayed outside of the car. It just blows it up and away. Okay, let's take a look at the windshield and hood area where the parts exploded. A dramatic testimony to the violence of the explosion in funny car racing. And a testimony to the safety. Look at that supercharger up in the air, bouncing down and breaking on the track. A lucky man, Roy Harris. And now it's more quarterfinal funny car action with Kosti Ivanov, a Bulgarian refugee who lives in Boston against Gordy Bonin, a Canadian. Ivanov's car, the Boston Shaker, Bonin's machine, the pacemaker, as they wait for the signal to fly. Up go the noses and down the track they go. It's a close race with Ivanov slightly ahead of Bonin, and Ivanov wins it at 234.98 miles an hour, but Bonin's car is not slowing down. The parachute has an open and he's headed for the fence. He's going towards Riverside. He's still moving through the snake fence and up against the outside fence. Bonin appears okay. He comes out of the car, a lucky man, and his parachute, for one reason or another, failed to open. Here it is again. Remember now, Ivanov is winning at 234.98 miles an hour, Bonin going about the same speed. The normal brakes won't stop the car going that fast. He throws it sideways, it goes through the netting, and slams to a final stop against the fairground outer fence. There it is. Our crew is down at the finish line with him. 
Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened? What, what well, the happened? parachute just failed to come out and uh, got bouncing down here and went through the safety net. Uh, slitter side was into the chain link fence to get it stopped. Yeah. One of those deals where if the parachute, it's my own fault for not getting the parachute in properly, apparently. Did you do much damage to your car? Or? Yeah, extensive. I mean, if we'd have won, we couldn't get it ready for next round, no way. Stop right to the Canadian. It's not an animal in a cage in a zoo, but it's Kenny Bernstein coming back to drag racing. He goes against Dale Foley. Bernstein was a racer several years ago, took a lot of time off to run a chain of restaurants in Texas, while Foley, the youngster from Van Nuys, California, admits to getting his drag racing start midnight riding on Van Nuys Boulevard. It's Foley in the far lane, Bernstein in the near lane. As they come up, that's Buster Couch, the man with his soundproof ears, waiting to send them on their way. Waiting for the lights to flash. And off they go, and Foley takes a quick lead, but bobbles, and Bernstein gets sideways, swerves, hits the fence, tears the right side off his car, Foley slows way down, and Bernstein crosses the line first. What a dramatic day of drag racing we're having here at Pomona. It's unbelievable. Something happens in almost every round, and Bernstein cannot possibly make the finals with his car in that shape. Foley coasts across behind him. Let's take another look. They're saying now that Foley is the winner. All right, here they are. Pulley gets off, bobbles, and then Bernstein's car throws. Ah, he crosses the line. That's an automatic disqualification. Hits the fence, tears the fiber work off the side of his car, opens his parachute. We'll be back in one minute to talk with this ex-restaurateur. Accident. The damage to his car was confined primarily to the fiberglass bodywork that shrouds this alcohol-burning car. He was a lucky man. Here he is now. No, it's probably too good. Kenny, it was wild to watch. What caused it? Well, the first thing that happened was uh, the car shook violently, very hard. The tires shook, and it, when that happens, it's, it's difficult to see what's going on inside the cockpit. And there's like two or three variations of shake. Most of the time they shake, and it's just enough you can go ahead and drive through it, and it doesn't bother you. But there's a violent shake, what I call violent, and that was a violent shake. The problem I did was I drove it a little too far in the shake, and she got a little out of control, and I should have probably lifted a little earlier, and that's the problem. You hit the fence, but yet you kept going. Did you see Poldy on the other side know where he was? Well, that really wasn't a concern uh, at the time. Uh, what I was trying to do was keep it off the guardrail. I saw the guardrail coming to me, and I said, I thought if I just hit the throttle and it just bounced it right off the guardrail instead of going over. So I saw the guardrail coming, and I just hit the throttle, and I just, uh, a reaction, I guess, and, and it did. It put it right back out in the strip again, and then my foot got caught between the accelerator and, and down below, further down, and the throttle hung again open, and that wasn't intentional at all, but I was just kind of cramped up in there. But that's what took place. Well, you won the race, but then you were disqualified for crossing the line. Had it, it, the victory stood, would you have been able to make, make the final in the time allowed? Well, it's very hard to say. Uh, we heard her up pretty good, but uh, a lot of fiberglass can be fixed in a hurry, and we could have got some pieces together, and you never know. You can patch these things pretty quick. I know we would have tried. Okay, better luck next time, Kenny. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. There have been a succession of disappointments here from Mona Don for them not making it, Kenny Bernstein out. But Don Big Daddy Garlet did not go fast enough to make the 16 finalists. And the drag racing pioneer from Sefner, Florida, has taken his new machine on home. A big disappointment to the many fans here. And now we move to the top fuel semifinals with Tony Kalita coming up against Richie Tharp. Kalita is part of a big story here. He's a former crew chief for Shirley Muldowney. He came back to racing after they split up. Tharp, incidentally, is a gold dealer. And, of course, he's in the news now with gold being so much on the financial pages. They're staged and they're ready. Top fuel semi-final. Will Kalita go to the final or will Tharp go? Part of a big story. Shirley Muldowney is in the other semi-final and the two former partners may very well meet. Four lights go and off they are. Tharp swerves a little bit and Kalita takes the bounty hunter down the line. He crosses at 238.09 miles an hour under six seconds with a 5.989 clocking. And so Shirley Muldowney's former crew chief makes it to the finals. And coming to the line now is the first lady of drag racing, Shirley Muldowney herself. Watch those rear tires grow as she does the burnout. This is necessary to clean the tires of any gravel and sand they may have picked up coming to the line. There they are. It's a great dramatic aside to the sport of drag racing. The rival will be John Kimball, one of the top black drivers in racing. We asked him beforehand if he could make the finals. Well, uh, the car has good potential. 
and it's really in uh, A1 shape, and I think I have a good shot at it. How about the driver? Is he in A1 shape? Oh, the driver's, uh, I think he's in A1 shape. <laughs> Downey's car is brought back to line. Shirley, who was a world champion in 1977, not once since then. Her former crew chief, Connie Coletta, was more than a man with the wrenches to Shirley. We talked with Shirley earlier today. Shirley, uh, you've overcome being a gal. You're one of the guys, you run with them, you win a lot of races. So what's drag racing now for you that you've really been accepted? It's my lifestyle. It's fun. It's the one thing I love. I just hope that I can continue to do it as long as possible. If you make it to the finals, who would you like to go up against? Coletta. Show them the way it's done. Well, that romance is obviously over, and it was that breakup is what put Coletta back into the driver's seat. Here's John Kimball, a man who was badly hurt last year. In the last ball turned his car over to Richie Tharp in a generous gesture to race in the finals. Shirley Muldowney on the near side, Kimball on the far side. In the semifinal for the top few to determine the makeup of the final round, and off they go. And Kimball burns rubber, and Shirley goes down the line to win at 240.61 miles an hour, 5.845 seconds, her seventh straight pass below six seconds. A remarkable move, setting up the classic final match. Shirley Muldowney against her former beau, Connie Kalitta. Everybody's talking about it. We'll be back for that dream race and the funny car finals as well, along with a look at some of the supporting categories in drag racing. But now, let's go to Al Michaels for more speed, but of a different variety. Out of California, one hour east of Los Angeles, for the 20th annual running of the Winter National Drag Races. $410,000 in posted awards has lured the top drag racers in the country here, and many fans, a record 61,500 have turned out. In the four days leading up to this final day, many exciting incidents have taken place. Here, on the right, Billy Meyer, one of the nation's top 20 car drivers, had his trouble. His car exploded. Parts went every which way. But the youngster, only 25 years old, who's been dragging 10 years, got out, fixed his car, and came back to race later. Then Brian Raines had his problems as his engine exploded, sending parts flying every which way. And then Howard Hayden, a dramatic explosion, escaped injury when his top fueler had trouble. Though it's been expensive for those who have had to make repairs, but for those who buy fuel, the costs are skyrocketing. Nitro. Where men race cars, this means speed. Fuel is heat, and heat is horsepower, is an old racing axiom. I'm standing in front of a 55-gallon drum of nitromethane racing fuel, the kind the top fuelers and funny car drivers use. To get down the strip takes between five and seven gallons, and at $22.50 a gallon, that's over $150. Extend that into the mile, and it becomes over $500 for one mile of drag racing, a mighty expensive pastime. But it's more than a pastime for Dale Colby of Van Nuys, California, and Ron Colson of Addison, Illinois. They come to the line for the finals in the funny car competition. They've made it through all the preliminaries. Between ten and twelve thousand dollars at stake in this one. Colby, the youngster from Van Nuys, California, who we said got his start street racing. Colson, a rather scientific type from Illinois, has everything figured out. Both of these cars have had a little bit of trouble in the preliminaries, but they have been repaired. It looks like two Darth Vaders going at it as they come to the line, critically moving to the position. The two top lights showing their pre-stage, and when the two yellow lights light below that, the fuse will be lit. One in, the other, and they're off. Up, and Colson has trouble. He crosses the line, and Foley takes it down to win at 6.258 seconds. A tough break, but he'll take it any way he can get it. His speed, 238.7 miles an hour as he heads for the welcoming crew at the end of the run. Tough break for Colson. Let's see what happened here. Apparently the car mishandled and he crossed that center line and that's an automatic disqualification. A long way to come for that type of finish. So Dale Colding, the Van Nuys California boy, gets the big welcome from the crew. Let's listen. <laughs> There's 
nothing like winning. And that's what's on the mind of Miss Shirley Muldowney and Mr. Connie Kalitta as they prep for the matchup of the meet. And we'll be back for that. But it's true, the matchup between Shirley Muldowney and Connie Kalitta until a few seasons ago, racing partners and romantically attached. Then a bitter breakup. We talked to Connie. Connie, everybody's talking about the finals. You know, they say old girlfriends are trouble, and if anybody knows Shirley's weak spots, you do. How do you rate her as a competitor? She's excellent. She's excellent. She's a good driver, and Ronnie, her mechanic, uh, you know, I spent a couple years with him, too, uh, when we worked on Shirley's car, and he's excellent, too. That's a good piece of equipment over there to race against. You gonna beat her? I'm gonna try. And what did the female lead in this dramatic scenario have to say moments before the start? You ready for him, are you, Shirley? Sure, Chris. Not you, afraid of him one bit. You asked for him earlier, and you got him now. What are you going to do with him? Put him away. Put him away. She sounds a lot tougher than she looks. But no one will miss this one. Even the blase pit people are coming to watch. Shirley and Connie, the Frankie and Johnny of drag racing. Everyone is ready for this one. Here she is in the near lane. No sponsor this year. Paying her own bills. Connie Kalitta, a man who's essentially a mechanic, returning to drag racing at the wheel since the breakup with Shirley. The classic confrontation as they move to the line to stay. Their long, needle-nosed cars, 2,200 horsepower. Shirley has made it in a man's game. She's not considered a woman now. She's another competitor. Watch the line. Stay. Her first victory in over two years. She takes it at 5.940. Oh, look at the glee. 247.25 miles an hour. And another straight pass under six seconds. And here, they come to the pits together. Usually, the loser and the winner are hundreds of yards apart. And Shirley gets out of the car. The victory area in drag racing is a lonely place. The crowds are way up the line. Let's listen to what is said. to a great drag race. And a couple of old friends here at the end of the run. Shirley Muldowney, the winner, and Connie Coletta, Connie Coletta, who gave her a great race. An emotional scene here. Turn around, Shirley, so we get a look at you here. You guys put on a great show. It was an important one for you. That was important for both of us. I'm really sure it was. was. Yes. I had a good teacher, Chris. Really? Yeah. But you don't look happy, Shirley. She is. I'm happy. Are you? I'm happy. Well, it's been a tender thing. You're friends for a long time. Yeah, I know. I think you drove like Connie. a man, though. Yeah. Like I said, I had a good teacher. Okay. Here